Hello everyone, this is Jim Lucy, Editor-in-Chief for Electrical Wholesaling and Electrical Marketing with the May 3rd edition of the Today's Electrical Economy Podcast sponsored by Champion Fiberglass. The company began producing epoxy fiberglass conduit fittings in 1988 and in 1989 developed the first conduit from epoxy resins that had flame resistance and low smoke characteristics. This met the most stringent codes and specification. In today's broadcast, listeners are going to be getting a special treat, a sneak preview of what top 200 electrical distributors are saying about the 2021 electrical economy, where they think the Biden administration's infrastructure proposals may have the most impact, and the impact of the pandemic on their employee officing strategies. And as always, we'll have to review those key weekly economic indicators that will give you a sense of where the electrical economy may be headed in the coming weeks. Those indicators are initial unemployment claims at the state level, rail freight car traffic, the Baker Hughes rig count, oil prices, and copper prices. Our thanks again to Champion Fiberglass for once again sponsoring the Today's Electrical Economy series of podcasts for 2021. We're delighted to be working with Champion again this year. Let's first look at those unemployment claims at the state level. The weekly unemployment data from the U.S. Department of Labor and the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics highlights the states with the most unemployment claims. It's valuable to electrical distributors, manufacturers, and reps because it gives you that local insight into the unemployment situation. The advanced seasonally adjusted uninsured unemployment rate was 2.6% for the week ending April 17th. That's unchanged from the previous week's unrevised rate. The 10 states with the biggest increase in unemployment claims from the prior week using the unadjusted data were Texas, with a change of 19,848 fewer claims, Wisconsin, which had 7,888 fewer claims, Georgia, with 6,809 fewer claims, Tennessee, with 5,198 fewer claims, Iowa, which was down 3,088 claims, Ohio, with a 2,854 decrease in claims, Louisiana, with 2,526 fewer claims, South Carolina with just over 2,000 claims, Utah with 842 fewer claims, and the state of Washington with 1,783 fewer claims than the previous week. Now let's look at those states that did have an increase in employment claims from the previous week. The ones with the biggest claims were Virginia with an increase of 29,218 claims, Michigan with an increase of over 7,000 claims, Florida with 4,762 claims, Oregon with an increase of 3,492 claims, California, which had an increase of 2,645 claims, Vermont, which had an increase of 2,592 claims, Rhode Island with an increase of 2,232 claims, West Virginia just over 2,100 claims, Kentucky with over 1,400 claims, and Minnesota 1,339 claims. One economic indicator that we always like to look at is freight rail traffic because it's a measure of the amount of raw materials and finished goods being shipped by rail. The best source for this data is the American Association of Railroads, or AAR. It publishes this data weekly at aar.org. The Association of American Railroads reported that U.S. rail traffic for the week ending April 24th was 538,184 carloads and intermodal units. This is up 30% compared with the same week of last year. For the first 16 weeks of this year, U.S. railroads report a cumulative volume of 3,620,079 carloads. That's up 1.5% from the same period of last year. You can see these increases in many of the individual freight rail categories. Grain was up the most year-to-date compared to 2020 with an increase of more than 20%. Total intermodal units were also up big with a 15% increase. Leading the decliners were non-metallic minerals with a decrease of 10% and petroleum and petroleum products with a decrease of more than 10%. If you track the oil market, you might be familiar with the Baker Hughes rig count, which tracks oil and gas rigs that are operating. The data is available by state, basin, and nationally at www.rigcount.bakerhughes.com. This slide gives you an idea of the largest oil and gas deposits. It really gives you a good sense of just how many of those large oil plays are in Texas, New Mexico, and Oklahoma, and how big an area the Marcellus gas region covers in Pennsylvania, Ohio, and parts of West Virginia. I thought we would look at a different cut of the data today and show you the year-over-year changes at the state level. No surprise that Texas has the most rigs in operation with more than 200 rigs. 
On the chart, you can see that the blue bar represents current rig counts, while the brown or goldish bar is the 2020 rig counts. You'll see that the decline for Texas is 72 rigs, which is a big chunk of the overall U.S. decline of 129 rigs year over year. Number two on the chart is New Mexico with 70 rigs. That's a decline of 17 rigs from last year. I always make the mistake of underestimating how big the oil industry is in New Mexico. And when you look at the number of rigs in operation, you can see that it is quite high compared to other states. Economists like to call copper pricing Dr. Copper because it's a leading economic indicator for future economic activity since it's used in so many industries. The construction industry is among the leading markets because it's of its use in wiring cable and copper plumbing pipe. Prices are still surging over the $4 per pound mark, as you can see in the bottom of the chart. This chart illustrates just how rare it is for copper prices to be over $4, going back all the way to 2005. And even to the right of the red line on the chart is showing the $4 pricing. Now let's take a look at what top two winter electrical distributors are saying about the 2021 electrical economy and where they think the Biden administration's infrastructure proposals may have the most impact. You know, you hear a lot about the plans and the proposals for the EV charging stations, and the high speed Internet. But as you're going to see, our early bird respondents to the top 200 survey are looking at some other aspects of the plan. Top 200 distributors think the upgrades of veteran hospitals and federal buildings, the modernization of schools and child care facilities and funding for commercial buildings and residential upgrades would have the most impact. For those of you watching the presentation, you can see in the chart that the responses are marked in red for major impact. Proposals with more minimal impact are marked by brown and gold line, and where respondents don't see much impact at all are marked in blue. As you can see, more than half the respondents said the expansion of broadband internet would have no impact on their businesses. Let's now look at the markets that distributors see as providing the most growth so far this year. Of the several dozen distributor respondents so far to our survey, more than half said that the residential construction and renovation and the commercial construction and renovation are showing the most growth of all the other key market segments so far in 2021. They, they saw that the industrial new construction and industrial OEM is a bit weaker, with under 50% saying that they were showing the, the most growth. Utility also checked in at a bit lower than some of the other segments. It was, distributors said that you, only 30% saw that the, the utility segment showing growth. We also surveyed top 200 distributors on their plans for employee offices post-pandemic. More than 60% say they'll be using the same officing strategy as before, with more than 30% saying they will employ a more of a hybrid model, with some employees in remote offices or home offices, and some working in company offices. Thanks for listening to today's podcast, and thanks again to Champion Fiberglass for sponsoring our series of the Today's Electrical Economy podcast for 2021. Contact me if there's any other type of economic data you'd like us to cover in these podcasts. Our next presentation will be on Monday, May 17th. Until then, have a great day, a great week, stay healthy, take care.